Hello friends, welcome to Inside Text. This is a platform to learn about power transmission elements and its control system. In today's video, continuing in the bus bar protection scheme, we are going to learn about the basic principle of bus bar protection. So, what is basically a bus bar in the substation? We know bus bar in the substation is just an arrangement of three current carrying parts which collect current from incoming feeders and distribute the current to the outgoing feeder. So basically bus bar is like a junction where different current paths for incoming feeder and outgoing feeders can be defined. So for example, let us consider over here the red part indicates the incoming current red arrows indicating the incoming currents and blue arrow are indicating the outgoing current. So basically this bus bar over here acts like a junction for incoming current and outgoing current. So you can see red is the incoming current and blue is the outgoing current. So bus bar is acting as a junction for incoming and outgoing currents. Now, let us understand with the help of an example, what do we want to see in the bus bar protection scheme? In bus bar protection scheme, basically we want to understand that the total incoming current and the total outgoing feeder at this junction is zero. So difference between the incoming and outgoing is zero. So let us assume 300 ampere is the incoming amp current at feeder 1 and 300 ampere is the incoming current at feeder 2. So at this point or the junction total incoming current is 600 amperes. Now let us see about the outgoing currents. 200 ampere through feeder 1, 300 ampere through feeder 2 and 100 through feeder 3. So again the total outgoing current of all the three feeders is equals to 600. So the difference of the current is zero. So the bus bar protection scheme basically continuously senses the difference of incoming and the outgoing current. If the difference between the incoming and outgoing current is zero, the bus bar is safe and no protection operation is required. See if there is some difference between incoming and outgoing current that means there is some fault that has occurred in on the bus bar and then in that case protection of the bus bar is required. So the bus bar relay protected scheme will come into picture. Now how does this scheme actually work? So we have CT provided in all the feeder on all the feeders. We do the connection of all the CT in particular way and provide one relay. So what type of relay is this and what type of bus bar protection we are discussing over here is bus bar differential scheme. So to understand the bus bar differential scheme, we are having one differential relay. We are connecting all the feeder, CT feeders in parallel and in between them we are providing this differential relay. Now how does the current flow? Suppose the CT is of ratio 300 by 1 amperes. So for this incoming feeder the direction of 1 ampere will be like this. Similarly, for another feeder, the direction of 1 ampere is this. At the relay, we are getting the total summation of 2 amperes that is incoming. Now, let us see what about the outgoing feeders. So, for 200 ampere CT with the ratio of 300 by 1 ampere, the current flowing on the secondary side will be 0.66 ampere. Similarly, 1 ampere for 300 ampere and 0.3 amperes on the secondary for 100 ampere on the primary. Now if we see the sum total and the direction of all the three currents for the outgoing feeders, it is coming to 2 amperes. So you can observe the balance of 2 ampere incoming and 2 ampere outgoing at the relay. That indicates that there is 
no differential current flowing through the relay and the relay contacts will not operate that means the system is safe for operation now let us take an example what happens if there is some kind of external fault suppose there is a external fault of 3000 ampere on this outgoing feeder because of 3000 amperes on the secondary side of the city the current flowing will be 10 amperes but who will feed this 3000 ampere this 3000 amperes would be fed through the system from somewhere so now the incoming current will not be 300 amperes but it will be approximately 1500 amperes on one and 1500 amperes on the other so accordingly now the secondary ampere will change to 5 ampere on feeder 1 and 5 amperes on the feeder 2 that gives me total 10 ampere flowing on this relay for the incoming feeders right now on the already due to the fault there is 10 amperes on the outgoing feeder so again incoming and outgoing feeder difference is zero this time also this relay will not operate indicating that bus bar is safe for operation no protection is required at this moment now what will happen in the case of some kind of internal fault say internal fault occurs on the bus bar itself of 3000 amperes again this fault will be fed through 1500 amperes on both the incoming feeders that means the secondary current on this two will be 5 amperes and 5 amperes giving a 10 ampere current on one side of the relay now in this scenario for the outgoing feeders there is no change in the flow of current so the total current flowing will be 2 amperes only this is giving the difference of 8 amperes on this differential relay now this differential relay will operated why because 8 ampere differential current is flowing through the relay it is passing through ct and it is flowing in the circuit so the connection of this all the ct is done in such a way that differential relay comes into picture for each and every case so in this case because there is a fault on bus bar the bus bar protection scheme will operate differential relay will operate and it will decide which cities to be or which feeders to be removed to in order to protect this bus bar now if we are talking about two main bus substation then in that case you can see over here this isolator is closed that means this feeder is connected on bus 1 again this isolator is closed indicating this feeder is connected on bus 1 so the combination will be two feeders connecting on main bus 1 if you connect both of them in parallel and provide a differential relay in between of these two you can do the differential protection scheme for bus bar again you can see for this two feeders that are connected on main bus 2 pro connecting them in parallel and providing a differential relay over here indicates that you can use the differential scheme over here now the question may arise due to some condition whenever you are changing the bus position of this feeder in that case the scheme will not be used So in our next video we will learn more in detail about how the CT selection is done and in case of a bus bar fault how the CT will decide which feeders to remove from the connected bus So friends this is all about today's video keep watching our videos and you can ask any comments queries in the comment section below thank you